everyone, welcome back for a new round of box office predictions. We kick it off with our Fantasy Movie League recap, and it's an especially exciting week in Fantasy One before we even get to Movie League because I made the playoffs. I was getting a little worried. I was at number two for most of the season, and then half my lineup got injured, but I managed to get a spot. I think I wound up ranked at number five or something, but now it's all about the playoffs, so I'm gunning for that top spot. With Fantasy Movie League in the predictions with Perry League, though, the season has wound down. It's the end of the fall season, so we have a full season winner. But before we get to that name, we did have two perfect lineups in the league last weekend. And it's especially impressive because these two individuals needed to put all their faith in a movie that wound up exceeding expectations. The complete perfect lineup was all Queen and Slim, and the two people that chose all Queen and Slims were Getaway Theaters and... XX Shrim 54 XX is Cineplex. So congratulations to you guys. I'm very impressed that you pulled that one off. But now it's for our full season winner, the official fall 2019 winner in the predictions with Perry League is Valhallaplex. Congratulations, you were up top for so long and you got the win. You got the win, so that means you could expect an email from me very soon because I have some cool prizes to send you. Now, everybody, though, get ready. New season is upon us. You don't want to miss a lineup early in the week. Award season 2019 or kind of 2020, I guess. It's on right now. As for my top five, I'm actually feeling really good about how I did last week. I did only go three for five in the end, but my numbers were fairly close, and I almost got that five for five. As expected, Frozen 2 topped the charts again with another $86 million. Then it was Knives Out, which I'm glad I had a lot of faith in because it wrapped weekend one of its run with $26.8 million, quite close to my prediction. The three spot went to Ford v. Ferrari, which made another $13.2 million, and then Queen and Slim actually just edged out A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Queen and Slim opened up at number four with 11.9 million, while A Beautiful Day fell to number five with 11.8 million. And now it's on to the new top five. And I actually don't think we're gonna see very many changes, if any at all, this weekend, because the only new release hitting theaters nationwide is the Playmobil movie. And it's almost like STX is asleep at the wheel on that one. I haven't really heard much about it. I don't think it's gonna make much of a dent. So instead, my number five this time around is going with last weekend's number five, It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. So yeah, it didn't take the four spot last weekend, but it's not because it performed poorly. It's because Queen and Slim overperformed. Hey, dude, how you doing, buddy? So with A Beautiful Day, I can't believe I'm bringing up this movie twice in two weeks. I'm taking a look at Daddy's Home 2. It's just too appealing not to use as a comp right now because both movies made a very similar amount on a very similar per theater average on Thanksgiving weekend. And then the weekend after Thanksgiving, Daddy's Home dropped 42.7%, which is in the range of numbers that I'm looking at for percent change for a beautiful day. I am tempted to bring it up just a little bit to 45%. This is usually a time when we see, you know, not so great holds, some big drops, but I do think 45% is very reasonable for a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And if that's what happens, this movie is making $6.4 million this weekend. And now, of course, that makes my number four this weekend Queen and Slim, which I do think is going to just edge out A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood again. And actually, if I wanted to roll with the Daddy's Home 2 comp again with this, I kind of could, but I want to add another movie just to beef up how confident I am in these predictions. And the movie that I looked at was the first Creed movie. And one of the reasons I'm focusing on that is because both movies, opening weekend, Thanksgiving weekend, they had a very similar per theater average. And then weekend two, the weekend after Thanksgiving, Creed wound up dropping about 50%. The thing is, Queen and Slim does have less to lose, so I want to bring that percent change down. And I think I'm settling on the same dip that I gave A Beautiful Day. It's 45%, and if that's what happens, again, Queen and Slim will just top A Beautiful Day with 6.5% million dollars. Now we're moving on to the number three position and I've still got Ford v Ferrari right here. I'm actually going to bring back that Murder on the Orient Express comp that I brought up last week and but last weekend I was using it for Knives Out. 
This weekend, I think it applies to Ford v. Ferrari because that movie, Weekend 3 of its run, which was Thanksgiving weekend, it made about $13 million, kind of the same as Ford v. Ferrari. And then when I look ahead to the weekend after Thanksgiving, it saw a 48.6% drop a very reasonable number for Ford v. Ferrari. And if that's the hit that the movie winds up taking, it's gonna claim that three spot with another $7 million. All right, now it's on to that number two spot. And again, I'm going with Knives Out. And again, I gotta bring back a statement that I made about this movie last week. And I think good word of mouth is gonna help this one big time. The comp that I'm looking at right now, which would be very good for Knives Out, is the movie Wonder, which was actually a week ahead in its theatrical run, but I still think it's going to come in handy here. So Wonder Thanksgiving weekend was weekend two of its run, whereas Knives Out was first opening Thanksgiving weekend, but they did kind of have a similar amount of money and Wonder had a very strong run. I think the same will be true of Knives Out. Looking at the weekend after Thanksgiving, Wonder dipped 46.4%. Yes, Wonder had a little less to lose than what Knives Out is working with, but Knives Out is only in week and two of release. So I think there's gonna be a little more hype and a little more urgency to see it. So I am sticking with that percent change for this one. And if that's the hit it winds up taking, Knives Out is taking another $14 million to the bank this weekend. Now we have made it to the top spot on my chart. And of course it's going right back to Frozen 2. Comps are a little difficult for this one because I do think it is proven to be an exceptional release, but just to kind of get a lay of the land and feel out the possibilities here, looking at some animated releases that hit theaters right around the same time, the weekend after Thanksgiving, Ralph Breaks the Internet last year, it dipped 54.5%. Not a bad drop there, but then we could also look at the movie Coco and the weekend after Thanksgiving for that one, it dropped 45.8%. Those movies are working with less money, though, than Frozen 2. And if I want to look at maybe a franchise that opened as big as Frozen 2, I turn my attention to something like the Hunger Games movies. And those movies, the weekend after Thanksgiving, they saw big drops, like percent changes in the 60s. I think that's too high for this movie. I think Frozen is going to hold on strong for a good while now. So... I'm kind of veering a little closer to those animated movies. The Coco one, I think, is way too low. So I kind of want to settle right in with Ralph Breaks the Internet, give Frozen 2 a 55% drop this time around, and that would mean it's making a total of $39 million this weekend. All right, you guys know what happens right now. We have reached the recap portion of the show. Frozen 2 is topping the chart for me with $39 million. Then I've got Knives Out at number two with $14 million, followed by Ford v. Ferrari with $7 million. Right behind that, it's Queen and Slim with $6.5 million. And then right behind that again is A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood at number five with $6.4 million. That is a wrap on my box office predictions, but of course, I leave it to you guys. Hit the comment section below, put those top fives and your number amounts right there, and then go over to Fantasy Movie League. New season, again, it is upon us right now. Kick it off super strong, and also, Go over there, let me check out your lineups, and let me see the comments, because I'm about to hit the road again, and I'm going to be bored on the plane, so I'm going to want to read your comments. Um, I'm off on yet another adventure, something space camp-ish. If you want to see what's going down wherever I'm going, check out my Instagram, at PNMROF. I have a very good feeling this is going to be a fun trip. Before I do hit the road, though, I have to give out some Patreon shoutouts, a very special group of six right here that I've known well for a long time now. They are Kavi. Neil, Seth, Kaiser, Caleb, and Ian. I hope you guys know how much I enjoy chatting with you and just getting to know you over the last few months, some of you years at this point. I just love the Patreon community so, so much and you guys are at the heart of it. So big thanks for the continued support and a huge thanks to everybody out there watching these videos. I hope you enjoy them. I hope you don't leave without liking and sharing this one. And I'll see you next week to see how we all did on our box office predictions.